Hey, what's going on, buddy? Yuki Fine Flame here with some Family Thunder or Hunter replays. I have like four duels. Haven't have been much of the Yu Gi Oh um, mood lately. So, but I have some nice Hunter duels. The Family Thunder is finally back on my channel. I kind of got into a little rut with this deck <clears throat> um, a little while ago. Like, because I played so much that I kind of wanted to take a big break from it. But now I'm back with the deck and it's kind of rejuvenated. Rejuvenating my love for the Family Thunder is a really fun deck to play. And we're going to start off against the Light Sworn deck. And we have a really good name here. Double Recycling Batteries plus Mom and Pa Hunter. Like, we have the nuts right here. We can go for a lot of stupid shit. We're going to go for the first turn Omega. Because first turn Omega is always good in my opinion. Since we don't really know what my opponent is playing. And I like to have that safe dark, like safe thing from the Dark Hole. And he has to pretty much uh, waste resources to get around the Omega. So, right at this point, I know I'm playing against Light Swarm, and I'm not really concerned because I have everything I really need. I'm going to attack into the Lumina. I'm basically trying to bait out the Honest, because I really want the Honest in my hand. And if I lost my Omega, I didn't really care because I did have recycling batteries to pretty much go for another rank for Exceed. That was just my, my thought process there, and it, it worked because I don't have to worry about Honest anymore unless he beckoning lights it back to his hand. So he goes for the light, the lightest effect. He's going to hit my Mirror Force, which really does suck. I was very sad that he did that. And he's going to attack me for the 2900 damage. And he's going to get a lot of mills off because he is... Oh yeah, he's going to start for the Arc Mike. We use it to banish my lance, which I'm just going to chain anyway to get rid of the Arc Mike. Why not do it? Because I'm going to lose it. I might as well activate it. So he's going to mill his 6 cards, milling that Necro, milling all those cards at Celestia, he's got a lot of nice cards. Surprised he didn't set the back inning, but I do have the Paw Hunters, so I'm recycling the batteries back, Ma, and the Paw Hunters. And I'm going to Normal Summon Paw, in fact, Normal Summon Ma. I could have used her effect to Special Summon Paw, but I didn't see real point. Going for the number 101 to snatch up his Arc Michael, and attempt to, cr to run into the Lyle, and, or bait up the Necro Gardener, which he does end up using the Necro Gardener. To stop my Arc Michael's attack, which is fine by me. Summon Zephy. Go for his Arc Michael. So he's got Arc Michael, my Arc Michael. It's like super uber sad mo face there. Like, damn. But oh well, I just it's kind of fun. So I lost my, my my arc, so oh well, it doesn't really matter to me. But I do have, now I got the rank up magic noom run force. This is a that I'm milling in hundreds. I love this card a lot in this deck. This, it really puts in some work. We're going to summon Paw, Paw Effect, Normal Summon Ma again. Like, this card. So we're going for the Utopia. Rank up Magic Numeron Force, the Utopia. Going for that Utopia Ray V. Using Effect to destroy the Horror. Taking the 2100 damage. And we're going to attempt to attack for 2600. And he lets it go through, which is kind of interesting because. He does have that Necro engraved. He does have another Necro, I believe. Yes, he does. So he could have protected his life points there because he's not in a really good position right now because looking at his hand. But he does top deck the solar recharge and he's going to try, but he ends up milling. No, he actually says two backenings. I'm going to end phase space one of the backenings so that way I don't have to worry about double backening like Shannon. But luckily for me, there is no JD coming at me. So my opponent makes a grave big, well not really misplay because he still pretty much loses. Tax for 1200 and then I'm going to attack for 2600 because now Necro cannot activate his effect. So I win thanks to pretty much the rank up. But uh, also I'm glad the fact that he did not have that JD to nuke my field. So next we're going versus Constellar. We're kind of going to go a little bit out of order here. I want to see the Fire Kings for last because that was a hilarious duel. And what the hell? This is my first time really seeing some of these rank plays. Like, what is he playing? XYZ Tribal Vivo? I don't know what the hell I'm playing against here, but I put a pretty nice here. The Palm plus Violent Prism. I love this little combination here because it lets me go for the first turn Spark Dragon Prisma Shenanigans, which allows me to just do whatever I freaking want, but he does Phoenix Chain my Spark Dragon. So, I guess sort of a nice move on his part because he didn't want to lose his monster since he had nothing to really protect it with. But he does in face space my bottomless. So, I am a little bit sad on that, but oh well. He's going to summon his Plox, flip up his Shet, I think as I pronounce it. I'm not familiar with the terms. Goes for the Omega. I'm going to warning that because 
I figured since he summoned that, must means he has like a lance face down to basically make me unaffected by spells, and this does count as a spell for right now. So I do time back on the sequence, I'm going to use the effect to add two Sis Hunters to my hand. Um, use Sis Hunters effect to banish the Paw Hunter, because that way it'll give me a play on the next turn with Sis Hunter plus Paw Hunter, so I can go for another rank 4 exceed on him. On my turn, and I switched this to defense mode just in case it was a mirror force face down. I didn't want to risk me running into a mirror force and losing both of my monsters because that would not have been good. So he's going to attack into my sis hunter, which I can care less. She pretty much served her purpose, which allowed me to get the paw hunter back into my hand for rank four exceed plays. So I top deck my mirror force, which is actually pretty cool. I'm buying a top deck back. But we're gonna summon up the Paw Hunter, Paw Hunter's effect, number some Sith Hunter. I'll use this to banish the Seahorse so I can deck them my deck even more harder. Going for the Omega, use its effect to basically say, nope, deck up 2400. It was also sort of smart to not bottomless my Omega, some people tend to do, because it would have been a waste of a bottomless trap hole. But the reason I wouldn't use the effect first, so I could basically protect my Omega. Uh, that way, if you had anything you chain to its effect, I. Like, I wouldn't lose anything, so I get the MST, destroying his Phoenix Chain, get the Want Giraffes to my hand, Omega's effect, Star Sparks effect, switching to Attack Force, summon up the Giraffe, and this is game right here, this is pretty much game, he's going to chain the Forbidden Lands onto my Stardust, which is pretty smart because after that, the Giraffe attacks won't be able to use it, but this is still game because 17 and then another 2400 is the game, GG Constellar player, um, as you can tell he didn't really open up all that well. So, sometimes, that's just how you your works, you open up well, your opponent may not, and Constellar 2 versus with the Nova Summoner, what is this? I don't even, so we're going to one of my favorite first turn plays, the Spark Dragon plus the uh, Prism, that way I have a dragon that can protect himself, and basically, do a shot with that 3500 damage, so we have the Venus Chain plus Trenchel, Venus Chain does work against the Constellars quite well, that's it's always nice too, it goes for the... Uh, Algadi, I think is how I pronounce her name. Venus Chain, and since Algadi is the effect of when this is summoned, so it will be able to negate the effect, um, which is nice. Which is why Algadi is not, like, as good as, say, uh, Pollux, but what he do. So, I got the Watch Wrap, and I'm going to take Dragon Watch Wrap first, just in case he has an Onyx. That way, he can't use the Onyx against me, so I can dish out that 1900 damage, and I have a Trenchal face down if need be. He also has Call of Honor, which is actually pretty nice. So, he is going to actually add that, get that warning, which is a pretty nice top deck. Summon Algaide. Algaide's effects versus summons the Sombrace. Trenchling the board, I'm going to use Dragon's effect to protect himself, since I do have the Watch Wrap in hand. And basically, I'm just really making him, putting him in a very tough, very, very bad situation, because he really uh, is, I'm not letting him make any of his plays. So for the duality, and I'm going to add, I believe I add the Sis Hunter, or do I add Bottomless? Do I add the Bottomless, because I want to try to prevent his plays as much as I can, that's just the way it is. So attack for 1200, draft effect, attack for 3500, so he's down at 200 life points, he's not in a really good position. I've got, I set the recycling batteries because I'd rather him MST the spell than my Bottomless. So he ends up actually hitting my bottomless, which does suck. And I activate the effect anyway. I don't know why I did that. I really have no idea. So he goes for the Call of Han, especially with the Sombre. And he's going to summon its effect to banish that, add Algaide to hand Algaide normal summons. Then it goes for a number 101, which is like, what is this? I don't even. So I do lose my. My awesome want giraffe, which kind of does suck, but now his warning is pretty much dead on the field. Can't do anything with that warning. I do have the Teen King, but the want giraffe will seal the game for me. At least that's what I was hoping, so I'm going to add the want giraffe and the paw hunter. Normal summon want giraffe, no point in summoning the paw hunter. Attack directly for that 1200 damage, and that was the game against the weird constellar deck with the Nova Summoners. I guess what I see. Yeah, he couldn't even switch on Zombra for that shit. So, final duel versus Fire Kings. This is actually one of my favorite duels because it was so hilarious. It's actually like, it's actually a Summer of Illusions type of thing, but I, I love this, this kind of, um, 
this duel because it's so much fun. Because you, you're gonna see, you're gonna see what I mean. So going for the pa hunter, pa hunter attack, normal summon, ma hunter, the basic level stuff. I could have gone for the first turn of a spark, but I didn't really want to. I didn't think it was really necessary. So I'm gonna attack for the 2400, and we're just going to sit there like that with the duality in hand, with the rank up numeron force, a lot of cool stuff. So he does have the, the baby Grunix, and he's gonna onslaught for big bird, or big bad bird Grunix. And he's going to activate the Struck Potion, which was kind of shocking because you don't typically see, uh, at least I don't usually see Fire King decks using the Struck Potion, but I can see why he was using it because of the fact that it gets free destruction off of it. But honestly, I would have just um, held off on the Struck Potion, just me personally. So now you're going to see why I love this deck, why I love Numerous Force. This shit's hilarious. We're going for the Maw Hunter, over to the number 101. Activate Rank of Magic Numeron Force. Going for it's gonna change the T word, which is smart because he wouldn't be able to activate it otherwise. Going for that Chaos 101, using effect, take that Garunix. Look at this. Look at this. This Chaos 101 putting and work. This thing is a beast. It is a boss. So he's gonna hit my compulse, set the Fire King Avatar Garunix and end his turn, but I do have that MST, and I have duality, which I'm going to activate duality since I won't be special summoning, but I get the Watt Giraffe, which is so fucking stupid, and this deck, I could have just gone for the the Thunder Seahorns and added two Watt Giraffes to my hand, and really deck then, I don't know why I didn't do that, to me that probably would have been the smarter play, but oh well, can't get Gorinx's effect because, well, Giraffe says fuck you. So he has the Wild Tornado, which is interesting. He, I've never really seen him play Wild Tornado. And they space a food, and and I hit that Wild Tornado. I'm thinking, oh fuck, that sucks. But 101 comes back and gives me 2,800 extra life points. I know over 9,000 life points. Yeah, I had to make that reference. Summon up the Violent Prisoner, and we're just gonna attack directly with that Wild Trap. Dish out that 1,200 damage. And I'm going to attack with the Silent Horde because I wasn't sure what that face down was. It could have been another baby Garunix. So I wanted to make sure I dish out some form of damage this turn. And I do have the Mirror Force to protect my monsters if need be. So he's got that Threatening Roar. That Threatening Roar is going to be a little bit of a nuisance. That card is annoying at times. So now we have the Thunder Seahorse, which I'm going to use Thunder Seahorse effect. I'm not going to be special summoning. Add two Paw Hunters to the hand. Switch that to the Fist Mill because I was afraid of a Mirror Force and we're going to end turn because I can't. Attack. I was legit afraid of a mirror force. So he's gonna end his turn since he can't summon revolutions effect. So we get a rank up magic new run force. And I believe I go for it. I use this effect again. Yeah, I go for the Utopia. Rank up magic new run force. Going for that Utopia Ray V. Using effect, popping that shit, taking a risk, and it paid off because it was just his summoner. So we're going to attack. For 1200, attack for 2600, and this is the game against the Fire King player. So much fun, so much fun. And I don't remember what this is. Know, let's take a look. Let's take a look together. What the hell is this? I don't know. Oh, yeah. This is actually quite hilarious. I go for Pilot Duality. I play against a weird hero deck. Um. And pretty much, I named it Omega because not much really happened in this duel, in my opinion. Not a lot really happened. So I had my turn not knowing what my opponent was playing. I could have uh, just gone for the Paw Hunter plus his Thunder and just sit on it, but I wasn't sure what he was playing. And he's got a bunch of back with the Mirror Gate, the Lands, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty nice. So I did the Narcov, double Numerous for so I'm going to summon up the Paw Hunter, Paw Hunter Effect, Normal Summon Assist Hunter. Sis effect, banners the Thunder Seahorse for more deck thing. Overlay for the Omega, make it effect, attach, and basically attack for 2400 damage. And I want, yeah, I don't remember why I named it Omega because I didn't know what the hell I was playing against. So I just named it Omega because that's the only monster I really had on the field was this fucking Omega, and he surrenders because he just can't do anything. And it's, it's a hero deck. But I couldn't, I, all I knew was the fact that he had background, I had Omega, so we'll call it Omega. So anyway, uh, that is the Family Thunder replay, so deck profile coming soon, probably this weekend, and yeah, actually it's available on the weekend as well, so probably either Saturday or Sunday to deck profile, because this is probably built on Saturday.
So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the replays, and yeah, I'm quite happy to be playing Family Thunder, or the Thunder deck once again. It's a lot of fun, I'm liking this boat a lot. And yeah, like I said, deck profile's coming soon, so hope you guys enjoyed that, and I do hope you guys enjoyed these replays. So, I'll see you guys next time.